Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today we're taking an updated look at Frontier Pilot Simulator. This is a game that I first checked out last year and was pleasantly surprised by the depth and challenge of a sci-fi piloting simulator. And I was just overall so impressed that the developers came up with such a unique concept that was also so fun. And for those of you totally unfamiliar with this game, the basic premise is that you are a pilot on a new frontier world that is full of all kinds of environmental hazards, and you need to navigate them in your VTOL aircraft while transporting cargo, medicine, passengers, VIPs, to locations under certain strenuous conditions. Now this video is sponsored by the developers, and if you want to check out the game for yourself, it's currently 21% off on the Humble Bundle store. I'll leave a link in the video description. Now the flight model in Frontier Pilot Simulator is pretty advanced. It includes all kinds of different weather conditions you have to prepare for, weight changes based on how much cargo you're carrying, multiple flight modes that you can engage, and more. And despite being pretty familiar with flight sims and having played them a lot recently, Frontier Pilot Simulator still keeps me on my toes. It's very easy to overshoot landings or descend too quickly where you can't recover. You have to carefully manage your speed and direction constantly based on changes in the terrain, elevation, and weather conditions. On top of that, the three available aircraft all handle very differently and are radically different sizes. Now, one could sum up this game as essentially a cargo hauling sim. You fly between various destinations, picking up and delivering cargo as well as passengers. Whenever you pick up cargo, the game has the option to have it select the most profitable place to sell, or you can manually select a place of your choosing. As for passengers, they generally need to get to their destination in a certain amount of time. Trying to fly against a clock while winds are pushing you around on your descents is pretty nerve-wracking. One wrong move and you'll slam into the landing pad. If you're lucky, you might only take some minor damage, but there's always a good chance that your ship will just explode if your impact is too hard. There were plenty of times where I thought I was just pulling off a cool maneuver or had things under control only to slam my ship into the side of a mountain or nosedive straight into to the sea. A few assists will help keep the ship level in airplane mode and maintain traction control, but there's very little in the way of hand holding. You're pretty much at the mercy of your own piloting skills 100% of the time. One of the most challenging things for me was just getting used to different weights of cargo. Heavy cargo will really limit your ability to ascend and speeds up descending dramatically. So you can't really just rely on your muscle memory alone for takeoffs and landings. Your fuel also factors into the weight of your ship. If you've got half a tank of fuel, you might be able to carry extra heavy cargo. Of course, if you don't bring enough fuel, you can run out of power mid-flight and then everything is toast. But heavier cargo sells for higher prices, so you're constantly balancing fuel against cargo against what you can actually handle in certain weather conditions. And that really is where a lot of the fun factor of Frontier Pilot Simulator comes in. You want to maximize your profits, but that usually comes at maximizing your risks as well. Now, the credits you earn will rack up quickly if you avoid crashing your ship that is, and eventually you'll be able to buy the bigger ships. The OX is a medium sized ship that's built for carrying bigger cargo. The Belena is the super heavy carrier ship. It can haul just about anything and has the fuel capacity to make it basically anywhere on the map. All three ships offer a bunch of customization and upgrade options. You can pick different livery and change the ship's paint colors, but the system upgrades are really where it's at. Most of them give you a dramatic boost in capacity, speed, or range. However, many of them have trade-offs like increased fuel consumption or lower durability. Getting into bigger ships was actually pretty interesting, not just because of how they handle, but because of how much more expensive they are to operate. In particular, the Elena demands some serious cargo hauling if you're going to keep it fueled up. It actually felt like the challenge of the game scaled with me as I progressed and improved my ships. At the same time though, the Scarab and the OX can be upgraded to extend the range and capacity. They don't just become obsolete once you buy the biggest ship in the game. Naturally, there's pros and cons to each ship, but they all serve a purpose throughout the entire duration of the game. There's also two storylines in the game with their own quests that will keep you busy for several hours. As you explore the map and do missions, new upgrade missions will unlock. Getting all the way to the Big Island in the southeastern edge of the map, for example, offers hangars with upgrades that offer bigger bonuses to 
engines, batteries, and even more. There's also different hazards and terrain on each island. The starting area has a few geysers and a volcano, and you will see these hazards at other locations as well, but they can be combined with extreme wind conditions, radiation at certain altitudes, and other things to basically throw you off your piloting game. Now one of the cooler things about this game to me is the modding community. Players can create and share custom missions via the Steam Marketplace, and the game's Discord server is full of players talking about the game. They were super helpful when I had some questions about the game's mission system and ship upgrades. Frontier Pilot Simulator is one of those games where the dedicated player base could add all new storylines, quests, items, and more just using the mods. Once actual enemies and other threats are added to the game, I can only imagine what what modders will do. While the game is very much about flying cargo around, I could see having all sorts of weaponry and stuff to defend yourself with being added to the game, either by the devs or players. Now, since the last time I played Frontier Pilot Simulator, the devs have done a ton of significant updates. The most recent one added ship cosmetics and customization, new cargoes, a bunch of optimizations, and more. A big update is currently in the works that will add winter weather to the game. The devs are also working on the flight model of the airplane mode in response to player feedback. I'm really excited to see what the future holds for Frontier Pilot Simulator. The devs are planning to finish their early access phase in the second half of 2021. By then, it'll feature more locations, a faction-based economy, more interactions with bases, enemy pilots, and much more. Again, if you're interested in checking out this game, and I highly recommend it if you like flying games, it's 21% off on the Humble Bundle store. Thanks again to Razar for sponsoring this video. What do you guys think of Frontier Pilot Simulator? Have you tried it out? Are there any ideas of mods or updates you think might fit the game well? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.